One night when I had escaped to Uganda, five people, all masked, captured me, kidnapped me, and brought me to Kenya. I was put in the basement of a police cell and woke up in a sea of water. I was naked and had been sitting in it all night. I stayed in that water for about one month. About a foot of water goes into the basement cell. They could freeze that water, keep it so cold that you shivered uncontrollably, and then make it so hot you felt like you were suffocating. I was interrogated during the day. They would threaten to throw me off the roof. A lie. We never threatened to throw him off the roof. He lied about the lack of liberty in Kenya. He lied about the treatment of forest workers in Kenya. Koiji Wa Wamwari lied when he wrote about corruption in government-controlled companies in Kenya, and he lied when he spoke about how tribalism is being used by those in power. He lies all the time. We should have thrown him off the roof. My name is Diana Ortiz. I want to be free of these memories. I want to be trusting, confident, adventurous, and carefree, as I was in 1987 when I came from the United States to the western highlands of Guatemala to teach young indigenous children to read and write in Spanish and in their native language and to understand the Bible in their culture. But on November 2, 1989, the Diana I just described ceased to exist. Now, at this moment, I, I hardly remember the life I led before I was abducted at the age of 31. Instead, I have memories of the torture. You may think this is strange, but even now, at this moment, I can sense the presence of my torturers. I can smell them. I can hear them hissing in my ears. I remember. That policeman raped me again. And then I was lowered into a pit full of bodies, children, men, women, some decapitated, all caked with blood. A few were still alive. I could hear them moaning. Someone was weeping. I didn't know if it was me or somebody else. The men who tortured me were never brought to justice. The American who was in charge of my torturers was never brought to justice. Now I know what few U.S. citizens know. I know what it is to be an innocent civilian and to be accused, interrogated, and tortured. I know what it is to have my own government eschew my claims for justice and actively destroy my character because my case causes political problems for them. I know what it is to wait in the dark for torture and what it is to wait in the dark for truth. At the time of my interrogation and torture, one of the lines my torturers used quite frequently was, if I survived, that no one would believe me and that no one would care. And I believe that this event is a sign to the torturers that there are indeed people who care. There are indeed people who believe that human rights violations are occurring around the world and that they will not sit back and have an attitude of indifference.